Three months ago, I created a personal site because I was looking for a job as a developer. Three weeks ago, I started working for Vercel, one of my dream companies. My name is Delva and in this video, I would like to walk you through how I built my personal site and share some tips that I learned along the way. Essentially, there are four key elements I'd like to take into consideration when I'm working on a site project. Content, design, code, and hosting. Coding is the fun part, but let's talk about content and design first. Planning my website before I write any line of code helps give me a direction and saves me time while I'm coding because I don't have to make any design decisions. When I'm working on content, knowing what to include and most importantly leave out is extremely hard. So I like to follow the old rule that regardless of the content you're creating, it should be tailored to your target audience. Initially, my target audience were recruiters, so my website followed the layout that you'd expect in a portfolio. It had an about section with a call to action, a project section, and a contact section. Side note here, one resource that I found extremely helpful when I was working on my site was a free ebook by Josh called How to Build an Effective Dev Portfolio. It's a great free resource and I will add it in the description below if you want to check it out. Now, I don't consider myself a great designer and I think a lot of developers out there could probably relate. So one rule that I like to follow when it comes to design is just to keep things simple and let my content or my work do the talking. But just because a design is simple, it doesn't mean you should be plain. Design is a form of communication. It's the extension of an identity of a company or a person and it should make people think something or feel something. One thing I realized while working on this project is that before someone dives into your technical prowess, they may make a quick judgment call based on how things look. This is especially true for recruiters who don't have a lot of time and who probably have to go through dozens of applications. So adding visual elements or small features that convey the emotion that you're trying to portray or show a little bit of your personality can really make all the difference. One example of how I did this was to animate the hero text with a library called a rough notation. This allowed me to highlight certain keywords when the user first visited the page. And he allowed me to infuse a little bit of my personality into my website because I'm someone who's obsessed with note-taking. I love taking notes as a way to learn. So after I have a rough uh, plan for my content and design, I move on to the fun part, which is coding. So I'll share with you the technical stack that I used and how everything fits together. Um, I intentionally made the section beginner friendly, so if you're not familiar with any of the tools I mentioned, don't worry, I will give you a brief overview of them. For the front end, I'm using TypeScript, Tailwind, Next.js and MDX. And for the back end, I'm using Prisma and Postgres. So let's start with TypeScript. TypeScript is a language built on top of JavaScript that essentially helps you validate that your code is working in the editor before it runs. VS Code, my editor of choice, comes with great TypeScript support. To give you a brief overview, let's check out the simple component that displays a preview of my blog posts. The blog preview component accepts a single post prop, and if you're new to TypeScript, you might not be familiar with this part here. Post meta is a type I've created to describe the shape of the post object. Adding these types up front helps me later because let's say I want to add an image to my blog post preview using Next.js's image component. Notice how VS Code is showing me an error, and if I hover over the image, we can see that Next.js has marked the source property as required. I'm going to set the source to post.image, but hang on in there, there's still an error. The error is because we marked our post image property as a string or undefined. This is because not every single one of my posts will have an image. If we didn't have this error, we might happily go to production without ever realizing our mistake. This is barely touching the surface of the benefits of TypeScript, but I hope you can see the potential. I used Tailwind, a CSS framework, to style my website. Thanks to their great docs and the VS Code IntelliSense plugin, getting started with Tailwind was frictionless and styling my components was a breeze. To give a brief overview, let's say we're designing a very simple button. I like my button to have a border, and I can start typing bore, and then the plugin will also suggest possible options. Let's give the border some rounded corners, 
and make it red. Notice how the colors have a nice little preview, so I can arrow up and down to choose a lighter or darker option. Finally, let's style the inside of the button. Let's give it some inner padding, a white background, and some text. So, as you can see, styling with Tailwind is intuitive because of the class names and once you get more familiar with them, you can start building components very fast. So, Next.js. Next.js is a framework built on top of React, which essentially makes it easier to set up and build modern applications. I personally enjoy using Next.js for a few reasons. First, it's scalable, which means that it can handle small projects such as mine, but it can also handle large applications. So if my data requirements ever grow, I know that Next.js can handle those requirements. It helps with things that are usually tedious to set up, like Webpack, Babel, and ESLint. It comes with inbuilt performance benefits such as code splitting, image optimization, flexible per page data fetching methods and API routes. Start. What I appreciate about Next.js is that it allows me to implement advanced features that would normally be outside the league of a solo developer and following the recommendations of the framework has helped me build better front-end applications. So for MDX, instead of hosting my blog posts on an external CMS, I keep them all inside my repository in Markdown files. I take this approach so I can use React components inside Markdown. For example, in this post that discusses how I built a like button, I included a few interactive components that help explain the concept. And this is a great solution for developers because it allows us to create more interactive articles by adding components to them. I found MDX a little bit complicated to set up and I'm gonna make a tutorial of how I did it as well as add additional features like a view count, read time, uh, tweets and syntax highlighting. Uh, so if there's anything that you would like to see, please let me know. I'm using Prisma for my backend and Prisma essentially is a tool that allows us to communicate with our database. What I love about Prisma, apart from it being a delight to use, is the fact that the complexity of building a backend is reduced. I can define my schema and use the Prisma client to make database queries. Add Next.js and I can either query my database directly inside my pages with get static props or get server side props, or I can write my endpoints inside Next.js's API routes. Prisma has actually written a great guide on this, which I will leave in the description below. So all of this happens without me having to leave my front-end repository, which is what I love most about it. And finally, hosting. I'm using Vercel to host my site. Vercel is a deployment and collaboration platform that essentially makes it easy to deploy websites. What that means for me is that if I push my changes to my GitHub repository, Vercel automatically deploys these changes to my website using their GitHub integration. This allows me to focus on coding, the fun part, and allows Vercel to deal with all the complexities of hosting a website that is performant and globally distributed. And there you have it, that's how I build my website. You definitely don't have to have the same exact stack um, to recreate something similar. And if you're just starting out and all you know is HTML and CSS, start with that. Start with what you know, start with what you enjoy. And then you can use future iterations um, to add new features and add new tools and use it as a learning opportunity. I made the repo of the site public, so feel free to take a look around and see how things work. If you have any suggestions for improvements, please let me know. And if you have built a personal site using a similar stack, I would love to see it. Feel free to share with me on Twitter. And that is all for today. Take care. Bye.